In section 2.4, titled Real Zeros of Polynomial Functions, um, we're going to start to get down to the business of how do we find zeros when traditional factoring techniques don't work. Um, to do that, we're going to have to do a lot of div division of polynomials. Um, so we'll go over, begin with going over a couple of division techniques. Uh, long division and synthetic division. We'll primarily be using the synthetic division, but long division has its uses too, so we'll cover it here as well. We'll go over a couple of theorems, the factor remainder theorem, rational zeros theorem, uh, and then we'll begin to use those to, um, to find real zeros of polynomial functions. We're not going to do much, if, if anything at all, with the upper and lower bounds um, for zeros, so mainly just we're going to hit on these first two right here. Dividing polynomials, we have two methods to do it, as alluded to on the title slide of the notes. Um, long division and synthetic division. Long division is just as you remember it, uh, doing long division of numbers back in uh, elementary school. Uh, the nice thing about long division is it works, I'm going to say, for all polynomials. Okay, we can divide any pair of polynomials this way with long division. Um, the nice thing about synthetic division is it is much faster. Okay, so it's kind of a shortcut of long division, um, but I'll add this, but only works for linear divisors. Okay, so that's the downside. It'd be great if the shortcut worked for everything, because then we'd never have to do this up here. Um, but unfortunately, the shortcut only works if we're dividing by uh, linear polynomials. Now, the nice thing about where we're going today, and as far as finding rational zeros, we're, we're pretty much only going to be dividing by linear divisors. So we're going to be able to stick with the shortcut technique um, for pretty much everything that we do today. But again, I want to encompass both um, dividing strategies, both dividing techniques, so we're going to see them both um, in this section, just so we're introduced to both of them. So the directions here say perform the division. 2x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 2 divided by 2x squared plus x plus 1. The divisor 2x squared plus x plus 1 goes on the outside. And the dividend 2x to the fourth minus x to the third. Now here we're going to add some extra terms, plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 2 goes underneath. So I'm just going to fill in all missing gaps. And that gets us ready to begin. So we begin this by uh, asking the question, how many times does 2x squared go into 2x to the fourth? Or, ask it this way, what can I multiply 2x squared by to get 2x to the fourth? And the answer is x squared. I'm just placing that over the x squared here, so I'm just going to vertically align like terms. Okay? So this x squared multiplies this polynomial, the divisor out here. So x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the fourth. x squared times x is positive x to the third, x squared times 1 is positive x squared. And then if you remember anything about your division of numbers in elementary school, you are now going to take away this row from this one. So I'm going to subtract this, subtract, and subtract. So what happens is this cancels out. I combine like terms everywhere else, I get negative 2x to the third minus x squared, and we bring down the next term. Okay, and then we repeat the process all over again. So how many times does 2x squared go into negative 2x to the third, or what can I multiply this term by to get this one? And that's an easier way to think about it, it would be negative x. Now we multiply. Negative x times 2x squared is negative 2x to the third 
negative x times positive x is negative x squared. Negative x times 1 is negative x. And now remember we're going to subtract this row. And subtracting these negatives changes them to positives. So let's see, this cancels. And it just so happens that this also cancels. We are left with x minus 2. Since the degree of this part is now smaller than this, this here becomes the remainder. Okay. So to write out my final solution, it is of this division, it is x squared minus x plus the remainder x minus 2 over the divisor 2x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, that's long division. All right, now I want to do an example of synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division takes long division and kind of turns it upside down. Um, so what I'm going to do is write my division bar upside down, but I've made it a little bit wider. Notice it's going to be wide enough to fit two rows of numbers here. Um, on the inside go my coefficients, 2 for x to the third, negative 3 for x squared, negative 5 for x, and negative 12 for the constant. I'm going to put a little line here. I like to add this to separate um, what will be my quotient from my uh, remainder. Okay. If there were any missing powers of x, just as in the long division example, I would put zeros in the appropriate spots, but there aren't here. Now on the outside of this, we don't use the divisor. We use the zero of the divisor. Okay, we need the zero, and the zero is three. Okay, positive three. Okay, so here's how synthetic division now works. What we do is we just bring the first number down beneath the bar, 2. And now whatever is in front, this 0, whatever is in front multiplies whatever is below. So 3 times 2 makes 6, and we put it in the next available spot. And now we're going to add these numbers together. They make 3. Now we're going to multiply the 3 and the 3 together. That makes 9. Put it in the next spot, and we're going to add together. That makes 4. Now we're going to multiply 3 times 4 together. That makes 12. I'm going to add these together, put it down here, and that's zero, so we have a remainder of zero. In other words, this polynomial divides this one evenly. Okay? So the answer to this division, then, is represented by these numbers here. Okay? And if I just divided x out of x to the third, okay, if we just divided x to the third, by x, the result would be x squared. That's exactly what this is. Uh, this 2 is representing the x squared term. And then this positive 3, positive 3 is representing the next term, which is x. This positive 4 is representing the next term, which is just the constant term 4. There is no remainder, so I'm not adding anything else to that. This is our result. As you can see, that's much faster. It's kind of collapsed, it's condensed. It's quicker, we drop all the x's out so we don't have to think about powers or anything like that. Um, just a numerical uh, procedural type problem. All right, next I want to go over a couple of theorems and we'll do a, a couple of example problems to illustrate each one. Now the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. The remainder theorem says that if if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is f of k. And again, we're going to do an example of that to kind of illustrate exactly what that means. Uh, let's go ahead and write out the factor theorem next, and then we'll get into those two example problems.
And the factor theorem says that um, a polynomial function f of x has a factor of x minus k if and only if f of k equals zero. Okay, so again, I kind of tie those together. You know, what does that mean? If f of k equals zero and f of k is the remainder, and then what this is saying, if we get a remainder of zero, then x minus k is a factor. Okay, that's kind of the implication here. Uh, so if we divide, that's why we talked about long and synthetic division, if we divide by x minus k and we get a remainder of zero, then that x minus k just so happens to be a factor of the polynomial. Directions here say to find the remainder when 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 is divided by x minus 3 with long division. I'll tell you what, let's just change that to synthetic division just to make this a little bit faster. So we've got 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Our 0 is 3. Here's the procedure again. We bring down the 2 and we multiply. We add. We multiply. Uh, we add. There's our remainder. Okay, so now find the remainder using the remainder theorem. Well, the remainder theorem tells us, um, again, that the remainder is precisely f of 3 f of the zero, okay, what we chose right here. Um, so if I were to find f of three, that's two times three squared minus four times three plus two, that's two times nine minus 12 plus two, 18 minus 10, which is eight. And you know, lo and behold, these numbers are in fact the same. So this synthetic division um, to find the remainder is the exact same as evaluating the function uh, at a number. Okay, this has actually got a name. This is called oops, synthetic substitution. Okay, uh, synthetic substitution is using the synthetic division procedure to evaluate a function. Okay, instead of having to plug any number in here and work it out, we can just run through the synthetic division procedure and find the exact answer that we're looking for.